Hello, I'm Dr. Hassan Tawheed once again with a very interesting topic, understanding meta-analysis. Understanding meta-analysis. In the previous video, we talked about the concepts, the ideas, and the logic behind systematic review. This video is an extension to the same video. And here I will talk about the concepts, the ideas, the logic behind meta-analysis. Or in a nutshell, we will try to understand meta-analysis. So what is meta-analysis? Meta-analysis is actually a study design. And as you can see on the study design pyramid, it is on the top of the pyramid with systematic reviews. And it is actually one step ahead of systematic reviews because there is statistics involved. In systematic reviews, there was no statistics involved or very minute statistics involved. But in meta-analysis, robust statistics is involved and we need to use software like Review Manager, RavMan. We call it RavMan or Review Manager. This is the name of a software. We use that software, this is one of the most commonly used softwares. You can use other softwares like R language or Stata. You can use those if you like, but I'm talking about the most commonly used software. It doesn't matter what software you use, but here in meta-analysis, you use software to do data analysis. Now, what actually are you doing with this meta-analysis, with this analysis, with this statistical software? Actually, what happens is that when in systematic reviews, you combine papers, previously published papers together. As I mentioned in the previous video, you write one paper out of it. So instead of patients, you have papers, right? So let's say you combine 50 or 55 or 60 papers on a certain topic. Now you will write a paper out of it and that is a systematic review, but you write it in a systematic way. In meta-analysis, you again follow the same structure, Prisma guidelines, you follow a systematic way, you have a research question, you have an inclusion exclusion criteria, in a nutshell, you are actually creating a system that can be repeated again and again, over and over again. That in the future, after 10 years, if somebody sees your research question and somebody sees your method section, he should be able to get the exact same results. This is what we are trying to do in a systematic review or meta-analysis. Now, what is the difference? Systematic review becomes meta-analysis. Yes, systematic review becomes meta-analysis. So remember, every meta-analysis is actually a systematic review. But not every systematic review will become meta-analysis. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a master's degree and you do a PhD, right? You cannot do PhD without master's. So every PhD is actually a master's student as well. Bachelor's, master's, and then PhD. So every PhD has bachelor's and master's, and then he is a PhD, right? Similarly, every, every systematic review does not become a meta-analysis just like every master's candidate or bachelor's candidate does not go on to do PhD. But every PhD has master's or bachelor's. Same thing. So every systematic review does not become a meta-analysis, but every meta-analysis was actually a systematic review. Now, what makes a systematic review a meta-analysis? The data. What kind of data you have? If you have homogeneous studies, similar studies, you will be able to do statistical data analysis and see how similar are the studies. That's what actually we are doing in the statistical data analysis. How similar are the studies or how different are the studies? That's why ideally you should have similar studies as much similar as possible. And then you do the meta-analysis successfully and you complete your project. Now, how do we make sure it becomes a meta-analysis? How do we make sure that a systematic review becomes a meta-analysis? By making sure that we have similar studies included. If we have different studies included, different kinds of studies included, that means heterogeneous studies included, it will remain a systematic review. If you just want to do a systematic review, then include different kinds of studies. But if you want it to become a systematic review, then you include similar kinds of studies. Now, this is again a challenge for many, that what do we mean by similar studies? What kind of similarity are you talking about? Remember, you remember the PICO question I discussed in the PICO questionnaire? P for population or people, I for intervention, C for control or comparison group, and O for outcome. So your similarity should be in these four things. Are the patients or population, are they similar? Is the population similar? In terms of age, in terms of gender, in terms of location, are they similar? Now intervention, are they similar? 
are they the same then that, that's wonderful but if not then are they similar like for example acetaloprem and citalopram acetaloprem and citalopram they both are similar but they are not the same so are they similar that's this is very good yes you can keep them or you may not keep them it's your decision now see for control group or comparison group what kind of control group was included in the studies are they similar or what was the comparison is the similar and what is the outcome are the outcomes or is the outcome similar is it mortality or is it improvement in some some sort is it loss of weight is it gain weight whatever it is is it similar so try to keep the studies with these four things pico population intervention control and comparison and outcome as similar as possible and then you will make an ideal meta-analysis if they are different or very different then you will not be able to do meta-analysis that's one way you make sure that the studies become meta-analysis and they don't remain systematic review but there's another way if you don't want to do systematic review you want to make sure that it remains if you don't want to do meta-analysis if you want to make sure that it, it becomes a meta-analysis then make sure everything is similar and there is a control group definitely but if you remove control group it will remain a um, systematic review you may not have to do meta-analysis so i'm telling you a secret that if you want to avoid meta-analysis let's say it scares you you just want to do systematic review then avoid the control group in your research question and just add studies without control groups and those studies too should be different age should be different gender should be different location should be different intervention should be different if you do that you will highly likely keep it as a systematic review and it will not become a meta-analysis and in meta-analysis why are we doing meta-analysis to increase the power of evidence to increase the power of the studies because you're combining so many studies together and you are actually including let's say you have 10 studies and each study has 10 patients so you are actually combining the data of 100 patients now instead of just 10, 10 patients so you are increasing the power and precision by including a lot of patients from different studies and you're combining so many patients so the quality of evidence already has become really really high and you again still check the quality of the studies you again check the quality of the studies by doing quality appraisal because you added so many studies evidence strength has already become really really strong so these are some basic ideas and concepts behind systematic reviews and meta-analysis and in this video we just focus on meta-analysis if you want to really enjoy this subject watch this video and the previous video together in a sequence and then you will enjoy and understand better about the concept of understanding systematic review and understanding meta-analysis thank you for watching keep learning keep watching